later on in the digestive tract. Whoa! <laughs> we are in the small intestine, that little food molecule you ingested in your mouth and mechanically digested and started the starch up there, got into your stomach, and the stomach you continued chemically digesting that starts, but you also mechanically digested everything and you started to chemically digest protein. Um, and now you're ready to push just a little bit into the small intestine. The small intestine can't handle all the stomach's food all at once. Um, so you put a little bit in at a time. Um, in that small intestine, guys, is long, like 25 feet long in an average human. I mean, if you're smaller, it's shorter. If you're bigger, it's longer. Um, and pretty narrow, just two and a half uh, centimeters, maybe an inch uh, in diameter tube. Um, so why, why isn't it just a big old sack like the stomach? Why is this long, narrow tube? Any, any thoughts or ideas on that, Mr. Kemeter or Ms. Ripley? Okay. I was going to ask if you're asking rhetorically. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yes. It, and it gets down to, um, a surface area is a very important thing. Um, the earthworms, when we did our, di our dissection there too, we kind of talked a little bit about why the earthworm is so long versus just like a big round uh, sphere. And for very much the, the same reason, uh, surface area. What does that surface area have to do with it, Mr. Homley? Well, the surface area, um, it has to do with how we absorb this food. Um, so, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. I just talked about the length and you can see the length on that lower right hand uh, picture. You can see the small intestine running in then to the large intestine. It's really a gross picture um, if you think about what they're depicting it, there. Part, um, part of it's like the disturbing part is just how calm the person looks. Uh, like, <laughs> He's kind of smiling this, even. This is just something he was expecting to happen today. Yeah. <laughs> um, but well, so that food gets to the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. It's only about this long, wraps around underneath the stomach. Um, and in there, the chyme gets mixed in with some digestive juices that have been made by some of those accessory organs, which we'll, we'll touch on in a little bit. Um, you add bile, uh, which is made in the liver um, and stored in something called the gallbladder. And that job of the bile is to emulsify or break down fat. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you just say job of the bile? Yeah, job of the bile. This is from uh, like Star Wars. Jabba, <laughs> Jabba it's, the it's the second cousin once removed. From um, Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> the job of the bile um, is to break down fat. Because at this point, we haven't done anything other than mechanically digest fat. Fat's just been kind of sitting there impervious to everything that we've got going on. Um, we also get some juices from the pancreas, pancreatic juices, which help to neutralize that acid. Because coming into the duodenum, it's really acidic. I mean, it's like at a pH of three. You don't want that getting further down into your intestines. So we got to neutralize that chyme. Um, it's got, and it's got enzymes that digest everything. It's kind of a jack of all trades. Proteins, starches, you know, carbs, lipids, everything gets digested by the pancreatic juice. So the last little bit of chemical digestion happens in the duodenum. And then it gets pushed down until the later two sections of the small intestine. And there, this is when that surface area comes in. We've got that long, narrow tube and we can see some of that in that picture in the upper right-hand corner, right? Long, narrow tube. Um, and then that long, narrow tube is corrugated, kind of like a, um, a culvert. You guys ever seen a cul corrugated culvert? Kind of looks like that inside, kind of the ridges up and down. How about corrugated cardboard? Or corrugated yeah. cardboard. There we go. Um, and you can see there, so that increases the surface area. You can see right there on that picture, now the surface area has got to be at least three times longer because, or more because of those corrugations. And then if you look on each of those corrugations, you see these little finger-like things called villi. Um, and those little finger-like things are full of capillaries and lymph vessels to absorb the nutrients, okay? And they're really close to the surface area. And then on that villi, there's even smaller things at the subcellular level called microvilli. We just keep adding surface area on top of surface area on top of surface area in the small intestines. And this has to do with the biggest job of the small intestines, especially the lower two thirds of it, which is absorption. And how do we move small molecules from one area to another? We learned about this earlier this year, guys. What's a, a really common way to do that? I answered the last one. Okay, fine. Uh, we were just talking about this in class today with the cardiovascular system of how oxygen diffuses into cells. So I'm thinking diffusion. 
Yeah, so we've got diffusion here. We've got a high concentration of all these nutrients, these amino acids and glucose and, and uh, fatty acid chains and stuff, right, in the small intestine. And the more places where the food or the nutrients can get close to the blood, uh, the more chance there is for diffusion to happen, right? We'll get more things moved across much faster, just like we saw back in the cardiovascular system. So by triple times increasing the surface area of the small intestine, we can make um, absorption happen much more efficiently. Okay. And as you can see there, the bottom one, the small intestine is specialized for absorbing nutrients into the circulatory and lymph system. Yay. So now um, we leave the small intestine and head into the large intestine. At this point, we've absorbed just about all the usable nutrients out of the stuff we ate. Um, and we're, we're dumping it into the large intestine. It's short, relatively speaking, one and a half meters. I mean, so you know, about the size of one camera. and a half meters. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but why? Wait, I just got that. Oh. <laughs> but wide, about five centimeters. So a bit bigger around. Okay. Um, so it's not, as, it still does some absorption, but it's not as critical, right? Um, there's a sphincter between it and the small intestine, so you can control when things go in there. Um, we've got a lot of bacteria living in there, in our large intestine. And those bacteria's job is to break down fiber. We have a symbiotic relationship with them. We'll learn more about that in our ecology unit. But we provide them with a place to live and warmth, and we give them food in the form of this fiber, which is cellulose like implant material that we can't eat that we don't digest ourselves and they will break that down for us and they will produce uh, vitamin k and vitamin b for us which is awesome we need that we are getting pretty sick if we don't have them in us if we like, kill them off with a too much antibiotic or something um but then again byproduct of that is their waste product one of their waste products is methane which is what produces most of the gas that we let out Silently, he's, he's, or uh, sometimes not so silently, or sometimes not so silently, or more deadly. Um, you know, um, and that methane is what makes a lot of that smell. Anyway, the other thing besides <laughs> digesting that fiber is most of the water you absorb, and this is via osmosis, is absorbed in the large intestine. Okay, we don't want to absorb it earlier because we want to have that water to help us move these leftovers out of the body. But by the time we want to get rid of it, we don't want to let water out that we need. So we actually absorb that water. Um, have any of you guys ever had really bad diarrhea? Are you, are you asking? Are you asking? No, nobody ever admits to it. We'll Personal pretend that stories. somebody somewhere you've heard bad diarrhea. And <laughs> it, it comes out uh, like, and it sounds almost like you're peeing in the toilet. Okay. Um, really bad diarrhea. The food moved through too quickly before the um, intestines could absorb all that water. Okay. So that diarrhea, when it's working correctly, you're actually absorbing all that water out of those leftovers, that poop water. I know, that's what is, it is. Is that a technical water. term? You're, you're, you're absorbing it into your bloodstream um, so that you get your water. And then that gives you nice solid feces at the end that you excrete out your anus. All right, and already touched on some of these accessory glands a little bit. Uh, the accessory glands are kind of hanging off the sides of the digestive system uh, outside the GI tract. Um, salivary glands up in your mouth, they're secreting um, enzymes that help break down starches. And that's why you can chemically digest starches in your mouth. The pancreas, which lies right underneath the stomach next to the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, um, that um, secretes juices that help to break down carbs, proteins, and lipids. And the liver, which sits above your stomach right there, um, produces bile. Uh, which helps with the breakdown of fat. And the bile uh, can be uh, stored and concentrated in the gallbladder, um, which helps to release a lot of it if you eat a real fatty meal. Now, if your gallbladder is removed, um, you got to be watch how much fat you eat at one time because you have a hard time digesting a large chunk of fat all at once um, because you don't have that reservoir of extra bile to shoot in there when you need it. Um, so that is the digestive system, folks. We ingested it in the mouth and mechanically and chemically digested it, uh, starches there, swallowed it down through our pharynx and our esophagus into our stomach where we continued mechanical digestion, continued chemical digestion of starch, and chemically st uh, started digesting protein. 
uh, into the small intestine where we finished all that digestion off, absorbed it because we had a lot of surface area, into the large intestine where bacteria helped us get rid of fiber um, and gave us some vitamins and we absorbed the water and then we let everything out at the end, which is all leftovers. That's all poop is, is stuff you put in your mouth a day ago, along with a little bit of bacteria and mucus from your intestines. So just think about it, that's all it is. And that's all I've got for you guys. You, get, you two have anything to add? No, you, you've covered it beautifully. Yep. You guys hungry? I could go get a snack. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, have a good one, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.